playing a, a song for us. We want to talk about the M Cruise Music Project. We're going to get all to, to all into all these things. But first, I want to talk about how you came to know the Lord. I mean, how did you first become a Christian? Well, <laughs> uh, in I grew up in I grew up in the South Bronx. Uh huh. So my parents got separated. So my mom moved to Long Island, New York, and my dad continued living in the city. So eventually I, I moved out permanently here to Long Island and I think it was 1972. And um, around 1973, my brother, which was uh, literally a, a warlord in a gang called the Imperial Bachelors back in the city, uh, my brother came to know Jesus in 1973. So for us, as uh, for me as a non-believer, and as a uh, Latino, we used to call the Jesus freaks. We used to call them the Hallelujahs. <laughs> so, so my brother came to faith, and I was like, "This guy's out of his mind." Well, you know, you can become a Jesus freak, you know. Yeah. But he, I saw the change in him, you know. But it didn't happen for me that way. For, you know, even though I saw Dave changing and coming to faith, um, I was a very getting my feet wet in, in music when my stepfather was a Latin singer. So as a young teenager at 15, I was out playing in clubs and bars with my stepdad. And that was, that's my dream, you know, but during that time around 1974, my mom had this uh, seventh day Adventist coming to the house to do Bible studies. And man, I used to be so mad. I was like, I want nothing to do with this. So I'd lock myself in the room, but over time, I would listen to what he was saying because this guy had so much joy. He was Cuban. He had, he had uh, escaped the Cuban uh, revolution from Castro and settled in, in America with his wife and uh, became a Christian. So this guy was coming over to my mom's house and doing Bible studies. And um, so event I just kept listening because this, this guy had so much joy. And I was very miserable. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I wasn't doing it for me at the time. <laughs> so... Um, over time, I, kept, I, I just kept listening, and I felt God, you know, like pulling at me, but I still wasn't ready, you know, for that, and um, still kept playing bars and stuff like that. So during that time, um, I was playing at a bar uh, in Bayshore, New York, and the opening band before my band was a Christian rock band, which I didn't know at the time was a Christian rock band. It was a guy named Louis Nazario, and this is 1975. So just picture everybody's in bell bottoms, you know, <laughs> Louie had a big fro, even though he was Puerto Rican, he had a big fro uh -huh. three piece band. It was him, his wife and another guy named Ralphie playing drums. And I thought they were like the coolest thing, but I did not know they were Christians. You know, I didn't even know what Christians were. And uh, he invited me over to his house that following Sunday. So that was a Friday night. It's a Sunday. So I show up to this guy's house um, I was like, come downstairs, you know. I'm like, oh, cool, I'll come downstairs. I thought we were going to get high. <laughs> and I go downstairs, and I see a bunch of, like, ex-Vietnam vets and all these hippies down in his house. Yeah. And and I saw, like, what looked like to be a church. It was like a bunch of pews. And before you know it, this guy's starting a service. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? And so through that, over time, I I came to know the Lord. So this guy named Francisco that I used to get high with all the time, we were both musicians. And um, one day on Suffolk Avenue in uh, Central Islip, we were both driving. I pulled over. I said, hey, Francisco, you know what, man? I'm going to give my life to Christ. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just, for me, that was like very big for me as a young 17-year-old kid going, I'm going to hand over my whole music career to this person that I've never met, which is Jesus. And he just looked at me like I was nuts. Like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so he literally sat in my car, which was a, a 1963 uh, Nova Supersport. And right in my car, without a preacher, without anybody leading me to Jesus, I surrendered my life to Christ. And I never looked back after that. Never looked back. I wind up getting into that band with that guy, Louis Nassario, that played in Bayshore. Oh, you did? Yeah, and we wound up playing churches, outdoor events. It, we were so radically saved that we would, we created a steel drum band and would go to parks because we couldn't bring amps to play at the parks. And we would play with the steel, uh, you know, steel drum band and just give hand out tracks. You know, that was a big thing back then, handing out tracks. <laughs> and uh, that that was uh, 1977. I got I, I surrendered my life to Christ. 
that's amazing first of all you just reminded me a couple of things number one you told me about the uh the jesus movement and yes. how we i want <laughs> there's so much i want to talk to you about the jesus movement i have i'm definitely interested in hearing about your experience with that um but first of all it sounds like you wanted that peace that francisco had right it sounded like that you wanted that that was the draw for you and he invited you to that church service and you went down to this place and you thought you were going to get high and in fact you were gonna you, you were ten so what were your first impressions a lot of people feel like it's cheesy like it's lame i mean uh a lot of a lot of people i know who are not churched people uh, I actually invited some friends of mine, people I met at the gym. I used to work as a personal trainer. I mean, they used to come, and then they would feel like it was too cheesy. They're like, you know what? This is not for me. But in, in your case, it wasn't that way at all. I mean, it you took to it immediately. For me, it was very cool. You know, because in the 70s, it was about, uh, uh, you know, hippie. Uh, I think I think at that time, Saturday Night Fever came out. Uh, okay. Um. I'm trying to think back then what was going on back then uh doobie brothers and all that stuff i think the doobie brothers that came out with uh jesus is just all right with me or something like that <laughs> but you got to understand that back then i was into hendrix and um you know stay away to heaven uh, i can't think of the, the name off the top of my head so it was all that cool music you know but going down into the basement seeing people with long hair bell bottoms uh you know fatigues uh, just it was cool it was like okay you know these cool people are here so i guess this must be cool you know so it didn't hit me like if you like if i had walked into a church where everybody had a suit on and a tie on which believe me i, I had seen that back then mm -hmm. and, you know he, you know like jarhead haircuts that's really cool now but back then if you were you know like a hippie type of person and you saw somebody with really short hair you just considered them a jarhead and <laughs> i never heard that before jarhead <laughs> And believe me, I I love our servicemen now, but back then that's the way you saw it, you know. Because you can remember the Vietnam War was going on. There was a lot of protesting. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we came out of the '68, '69 when uh, when Kennedy and Dr. Martin Luther King had gotten killed. So so America was still in a turmoil. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, going into the '70s, um, it was all like give peace a chance kind of thing, and you know, getting high. So. So walking into that hippie Jesus freak church was like cool to me. <laughs> you know, if you put it that way, that makes a lot of sense because they were non-traditional Christians. It sounds like it was like the edgy Christians, the Christians who were on the on the verge of like a new breakthrough. They were they're the the foot soldiers of this Jesus movement, right? Didn't that kind of like turn into?